Hello everyone and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. The Battle for Zendikar expansion has finally released, so it's time to jump right back into the game. And we're starting off with a mono green ramp deck featuring, of course, the almighty Ulamog, which I was lucky enough to already unlock. I'm still missing a couple cards, but nothing too important, so this deck is definitely playable. So this is a card we want to cast, so in order to get to 10 mana we have to ramp a bit and make sure we don't die uh, by that point. So let's get started here with our 1-drops where we have a Jadi offshoot, single green for an 0-3 defender and has the landfall ability. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control we gain 1 life. So the purpose of the offshoot is simply to buy us some time block some aggressive ground creatures and gain some life while we play our lands or ramp a bit. So it's just a way to get to the late game and uh, an O3 defender is not that bad when there's lots of uh, two powered creatures on the ground. Moving on we have the classic gate creeper vine to grab any land but in this deck it's only gonna grab a forest. So just to make sure we keep hitting our land drops and to have another blocker in play. As well as Elvish Visionary just to draw another card. Good in the late game once we filtered out lots of lands out of our deck with our ramp spells. So it can um, get one of our big creatures and in the early game also helps us hit land drops and keep the deck flowing. Since we don't have a lot of cheap creatures anyways so might as well spend 2 mana to cast an Elvish Visionary. Then we also have Evolutionary Leap to go with those cheap creatures. In a late game we can simply sacrifice them to the leap and hopefully find bigger creatures with them. So it's still a very powerful card. Moving on we have Nissa, which also fits perfectly into this deck since she helps us uh, hit more land drops and pretty easy to transform only needs 7 lands in play and then becomes Sage Animist which can uh, draw some more cards or make an elemental creature and if we ever get to 7 loyalty it's game over. Still one copy of Reclamation Sage to deal with opposing enchantments or artifacts. There are some powerful new enchantments in the Battle for Zendikar expansion so it's nice to have access to a Reclamation Sage that we can also uh, look for with our Woodland Bellower. Then we have 4 Nissa's Pilgrimage, this is an actual ramp card so it puts an extra land into play and if we have Spell Mastery, 2 forests in our hand, otherwise just 1. So still a pretty good deal as we get 2 lands for just 1 card. And then at 4 mana we have Monvuli Acid Moss which is technically a ramp card as it puts another forest into play and also destroys one of the opposing lands. So we don't get any explosive vegetations in this set unfortunately, so no 4 mana cards that ramp for uh, 2 lands, but Acid Moss is not that bad uh, as it does ramp for 1 and still disrupts the opponent. Then we have Outland Colossus as one of our cheaper uh, win conditions, still pretty powerful as a 6-6 six, six for 5 mana. Renowned 6, so if he connects with the opponent we get a 12-12 and can only be blocked by one creature. So pretty difficult for the opponent to deal with and will require lots of chum blocking by the opponent. Then we have another new addition, Green Warden of Morasa, 6 mana for a 5-4. But when he enters the battlefield we can return any card from our graveyard to our hand. And when he dies, if we exile him we can do the same. So it's a double eternal witness effect which is very very powerful so it can get us uh, more ramp cards in the early game or in the late game can grab one of our other win conditions to ensure our victory. So just lots of value for just one card and 6 mana is quite doable in this deck. Then we have the woodland bellower I mentioned to grab one of our uh, cheap green creatures and is very nice with Reclamation Sage since we can uh, grab it with the Bellower. Then we have another new addition in Oblivion Sower, another Mythic Rare 5 8 
and when he enters the battlefield, uh, or rather when we cast him, so even if he gets countered, this effect still happens, we can exile the top four cards of an opponent's library and put all lands revealed this way uh, in play under our control, so best case scenario we ramp for four, worst case scenario we just exile the top four cards of the opponent's library, but the usual scenario is we get about two lands in play with the Oblivion Sower, which is a uh, ramping for two, which is not bad if we're trying to get to 10 mana. So definitely a very powerful card. Then we also have Anissa's Renewal, six mana, ramps for three and gains a seven life. Only have the one copy, would probably play both if I had the other one, as it's gaining seven life is pretty useful in a ramp deck since the opponent is going to try and kill us quickly, and the 7 life buys us at least a turn while we get to 10 mana to cast our more powerful cards to try and take over the game. Then we have one Gaia's Revenge as another win condition, hasty, difficult to remove for the opponent and can't be countered. Then I'm also trying out one Nissa's Revelation, Scry 5, reveal the top card, and if it's a creature card we get to draw a bunch of cards and gain a bunch of life according to the creature's power and toughness. So hopefully we get to reveal a big Eldrazi to draw some cards and gain some life. Then we get to the Eldrazi cards, we've got two Breaker of Army so far, 10-8 uh, has to be blocked by all creatures. So if the opponent isn't attacking, then he's probably losing his entire board, which is nice to have this kind of effect in a mono green deck since we don't really play any removal spells. Uh, also playing one Eldrazi Devastator since I don't have the third Breaker of Armies yet. Just an 8-9 Trampler, nothing too fancy. And then of course we get Ulamog, which is by far the most powerful a card in the deck since it exiles two permanents when we cast them, so it can even exile lands, indestructible, and when he attacks, this is the important part, the defending player exiles the top 20 cards of his or her library, so this usually means that two attacks with Ulamog is game over, even if the opponent blocks Ulamog, since uh, usually they'll have about 40 cards left in their library when you cast Ulamog, so two attacks is 40 cards exiled, and then uh, we mill them out and we win. And then we also have another big Eldrazi here in Desolation Twin. Also 10 mana, 10-10, ten, ten, and when we cast him we get a 10-10 ten, ten Eldrazi token. Would also probably play the second copy if I had it. And other cards I probably should mention is From Beyond, 4 mana enchantment that makes an Eldrazi Scion token every turn. And for 1 and a green we can sacrifice the enchantment to search up any Eldrazi card and put it into our hand, so a nice way to find Ulamog and also ramps us and make some chum blockers, so pretty nice card in this archetype I think, so definitely worth trying out. And then finally we get to our mana base where we have 20 forests, nice and easy, all come into play untapped, and then 3 copies of Foundry of the Consuls, as a way to make some Thopter tokens, combines nicely with Evolutionary Leap since we can sacrifice the tokens to find more creatures, and also the flying creatures are quite nice in this deck since otherwise the deck is quite weak to flying creatures, we don't have any way to interact with flying creatures. And then we also have one copy of Rogue's Passage to make our big guys unblockable, works especially nicely with the Outland Colossus to make it renowned. Um, the only non-bow is with uh, Gaia's Revenge, we can't actually target it with the Rogue's Passage, but we only have one copy, so it's not a big deal. So yeah, that's 24 lands total, let's take a look at the curve, and let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which is interesting but I think we won't keep a 6-lander. And this hand has some potential, and I think we can keep it. Just needs to draw 4th land. We can cast Acid Moss, and then Sower into Twin, hopefully. So this hand could lose to a quick start from the opponent. 
and if we don't draw our fourth land, we're in trouble. But let's see what happens. All right, there's our fourth land, which is good. You will also have noticed there's some new icons in the game. And uh, yeah, also a nice new background. As our opponent plays Alchemist's File and draws a card. So Blue Black and Elvish Visionary is a nice draw. Not gonna play out the Foundry quite yet. As there's really no reason to. Alright, perfect. We get to curve Pilgrimage into Acid Moss into Oblivion Sower. And our opponent is not applying a lot of pressure, so looks like this hand might get there. And a three-color deck is not that great against the Acid Moss. So here we have to decide next turn or in two turns what land to destroy. Okay, let's go ahead and attack. And then cast Nissa's Pilgrimage. So our opponent could be playing the Sultai uh, Sphinx's Tutelage Fog uh, Mill deck. But he didn't have the turn 3 Sphinx's Tutelage, which is good for us. And alright, let's see. Alright, never mind. Opponent plays a Mind Raker. But doesn't look like he has anything in exile. So just a 3 3 4 4 mana. Which is fine. And our opponent has only one green source here, so I think we'll target the opponent's green source with the Acid Moss. If we can find it, I think it's this one. Alright. Get another land. And we are well on our way to casting Desolation Twin. No need to attack with our Visionary here. I don't think we chum block quite yet. We can take a hit or two. Alright, the opponent did have another forest. We'll go to 17 here. And on our turn we have to decide if we want to play the Oblivion Sower or if we want to perhaps cast some more ramp cards as their opponent played Smothering Abomination 4-3 Flyer has to sacrifice a creature every turn but then that gets to draw a card so not bad and a Flyer is a card we should be worried about so let's see we have potentially 7 mana available so we could even consider the Revelation although I think I would rather get to 10 mana quickly for the Desolation Twin. Um, so the options are realistically either cast the Oblivion Sower or go with Pilgrimage plus Acid Moss, which could also destroy the forest again, which is not bad. And then next turn I believe we should be able to cast Desolation Twin. Or we can hope to get lucky with the Sower and then perhaps still cast the Desolation Twin next turn, which also doesn't sound bad. Given that we should worry about the 4-3 Flyer, I think we want to close out this game as quickly as possible, or get lucky and gain lots of life with the Revelation. So given that, I think we actually do want to um, go with the Oblivion Sower here. So let's try that, target our opponent. 
So we actually get a threat in play. Yes, we get a free rogues passage, which is good, but only one and exiled some other stuff. Let's play forest and pause the turn. So it looks like we won't be able to cast a desolation twin next turn. But I think that's all right. At least we have a 5-8 in play that can also start attacking. So our opponent on an interesting Eldrazi themed deck with ingest and processor cards. So probably not playing Sphinx's tutelage. All right, there's an eyeless watcher which will put a whole bunch of Eldrazi Scion tokens in play, which goes nicely with the Abomination, since now our opponent has lots of creatures to sacrifice, and can just sacrifice these right away to draw two cards with the Abomination if he wants to. So, it does have a lot of blockers for our big dumb creatures. Opponent passes without attacking, that's good. Alright, so I don't think we want a Rogue's Passage here. Our opponent's still at 19. Um, I do think we want to attack with the Oblivion Sower here. And then we have, again, a lot of options. I think we want to play Offshoot and then play Acid Moss and Pilgrimage here. Gain a bunch of life, destroy the green source our opponent has. And then next turn we can cast the twin for sure. And then uh, Rogue's Passage on the twin should get the job done. So yeah, I think I'll go for that. But first let's attack with Oblivion Sower. See what our opponent does. And keep back the Visionary since our opponent can just eat it. Most likely just a chum block. Opponent can even sacrifice his Scion if he wants to, to add a colorless mana. He probably should do that, because now he doesn't get to draw a card with the Abomination. Um, so now let's play the Offshoot. Play the Acid Moss on the Forest. Get a land, gain a life. Play the Nissa's Pilgrimage. Get three lands with a Spell Mastery. Gain a life, play a land, gain a life, and pass a turn. Back at 20. Opponent sacrifices a creature and gets to draw a card. Strangely decides to sank the Scion token, while I would think sacrificing the Watcher is better, since that doesn't have the ability to sacrifice for mana. An Eldrazi Sky Spawner, not a bad card, and another Flyer we have to worry about. And does our opponent attack this turn? Nope. Alright, that's good for us. Let's see what we draw. Nissa's Renewal, not bad, so it can gain us some more life. But I think it's time for Desolation Twin here. Um, but first, let's attack with Mr. Oblivion. See how our opponent blocks. Probably should again chump and then sacrifice the Scion before damage. Let's see if our opponent remembers. Doesn't look like it. So now let's just cast a Desolation Twin, getting another 10-10. And then our opponent's Rogue's Passage is going to be pretty helpful. Alright, pause the turn, and uh, here probably going to cast a Renewal first, so we have more chance of uh, finding something relevant with the Revelation.
and we also have enough time to do both, I think. All right, Skyline Cascade, one of the new uh, common lands with abilities when they enter a battlefield. Probably should have targeted our Oblivion Sower. Not our Alchemist file. Our opponent can definitely use these um, when we try and attack, but I think, yeah, right, our opponent's had enough. We should probably attack first and then uh, use the Rogue's Passage, because if we use the Rogue's Passage first, then our opponent can respond by activating the Vial. Well, if we attack first, our creature's already declared as an attacker, and our opponent can no longer use the Vial. And then before blocker still, we can use the Rogue's Passage. So this is going to cost 5 mana, five mana total. So uh, we should still be able to cast the Nissa's Renewal here. So, uh, yeah, let's do what I mentioned. Opponent uses a vial right away, that's fine. So we'll just attack with these other two. And then use the Rogue's Passage on our Desolation Twin. Opponent blocks, takes 10, and then could probably Revelation here, but we can do that next turn. And I want to set up the best possible Nissa's Revelation. And we even get to play the Visionary now. If you have both Visionary and Ramp cards in your hand, it's better to play the Ramp cards first so you're less likely to draw lands. Another Sky Spawner. Alright. I think... Alright, that's also pretty sweet. So many good cards. Um, let's see. What do we want to do first? I think we want to scry 5 first, and, or actually no, let's play Nissa first, otherwise we shuffle away what we scryed to the bottom. Get a forest. Don't have to activate Nissa quite yet, we can play the revelation first here. And also should not have tapped these lands. Alright, so... Uh, on top of our library, so let's put this guy first, or rather this guy first, this guy second, rest on the bottom, reveal woodland bellower, and then draw six, gain five life, I believe. Sweet, and now we get to plus one our Nissa. Revealing Ulamog. All right, I think we want to stick around for a turn so we can cast Ulamog. I think you will agree. And given that we accidentally tapped our Rogue's Passage, I don't think we can actually win this turn. So let's go ahead and attack. Our opponent does not use the Vial. Let's attack with our big guys. Opponent double chumps. And uh, let's see. I guess we can cast a Green Warden getting back Nissa's Revelation here. And then we'll have to discard a land, which is fine. Meteorite will kill or deal to damage to Nissa, And now we get to untap, play another land. Meanwhile, we're at 39 life, thanks to our offshoot. And now we get to cast Ulamog. And 
we'll go for the land destruction here, exiling the catacomb and what's left here doesn't really matter. Let's go with the island. All right, those are exiled. Sweet. And I guess that's enough bad manners for now. Doesn't really matter. And attack with everyone. All right. Well, we got to do pretty much all we wanted to do with this deck so far. So let's move on to the next one. All right, let's take a look at our opening hand. It's pretty slow without any ramp cards. Um, yeah, we're not really close to casting either of these cards. I think we have to try another one, unfortunately. Uh, this hand, on the other hand, is almost perfect. We have early ramp, make sure we hit our land drops. We have blockers in case our opponent's on an aggressive start. And it looks like our opponent is. And we have a finisher as well. So let's pause a turn. A Jadi offshoot would have been pretty nice here. But I guess we'll have to settle with a Gate Creeper Vine. So we go down to 18. But at least we have a blocker for the Glory Chaser. Alright, so let's play Land, Gay Creeper Vine. Get another Forest. And our opponent could be killing our Gay Creeper Vine here to enable the Renown. Or could be playing some sort of enchantment. Yep, that's an infectious bloodlust on the glory chaser. And only attacks with the glory chaser for some reason. Probably a misclick. But we are gonna block here since Gate Creeper Vine is not gonna get much better. And we still have another one here. So now we have to decide between casting Pilgrimage or another Gay Creeper Vine. Pilgrimage does get us closer to actually casting one of our finishers if we draw another one. Um, Gay Creeper Vine prevents three damage and prevents this from becoming renowned, which I think is pretty important as well. But if we do cast Pilgrimage this turn, we get to cast both Pilgrimage and Gay Creeper Vine on the next turn. But by that point, we can't block the Glory Chaser anymore. So we're definitely not in a great spot here. So I guess we'll just go ahead and cast another Gay Creeper Vine here. Try and buy us some time. And pause the turn. My guess is a card like Outland Colossus is probably one of our better draws. As it can block these creatures and also deal some damage as their opponent kills or Vine unfortunately gets in for 5. If he remembers to attack that is. So already down to 13 life. So, we would really like to draw a Jadi offshoot at this point. Alright, there we go. Ask and you shall receive. Play it before playing our land. Play a land to gain a life. Cast Pilgrimage to gain another life. No spell mastery yet. All right, so we might still have a chance here. So now we get to block the Elite Vanguard. Well, it looks like it will have to be a chum block if we want to block. 
interesting. So we could just take eight here. Then next turn we play a land, gain a life, ramp, gain a life, and then block the mirror, which in the end will have gained us the life we prevent by blocking here. So I think we can actually afford to take eight here and then perhaps jump block next turn. All right, Woodland Bellower, that's a nice one. Can uh, actually grab a Reclamation Sage, which can destroy one of those enchantments. Uh, let's think about which one we want to destroy. Um, this one is still going to be Renowned, so we have to block it with two or more creatures. This one we can block a little easier. Um, so let's see, would we rather have a 2-2 Menace? Eh, it's pretty easy to deal with. Uh, and a 4-2 we can still block. So yeah, I think we want to destroy this one. So let's cast our Bellower. Grab a Reclamation Sage. And destroy the Bloodlust. And pause a turn. So now we have a block here and a double block there. Nimbus Wings is a problem since now our opponent can enchant the Elite Vanguard and hit us for five. It's going to attack with everyone. That's probably a mistake. Although I guess he gets to trade with the Reclamation Sage this way. So let's see what happens if we play Gaia's Revenge next turn. We hit for 14. That's still not enough. Even with the Reclamation Sage. So yeah, I'm not sure how we're going to get out of this one. Pilgrimage gains us an additional life, but that's still not enough, so we have to draw something like Nessa's Renewal to gain 7 life here. That would actually be pretty good. Or if we draw another offshoot, perhaps. Oblivion Sower. Yeah, that might actually do it with the landfall if we get lucky. Um... Uh, yeah, it definitely beats playing the Gaius Revenge because then we're just dead on board. So yeah, let's try our luck. And play Oblivion Sower, target our opponent. Opponent has a Twin Bolt. Yep. So yeah, we're just dead here. Did not see that coming. Should have just perhaps played a land. Because now our opponent can deal one to us, one to... Perilous Mirror? Alright, weird. Our opponent perhaps missed it. Our opponent could have Twin Bolted his own Perilous Mirror and then dealt 1 damage to us. And then 2 damage from Perilous Mirror will kill us. But our opponent somehow did not end up casting it. And we hit 3 lands, gain 3, gain another one. So we're actually not dead yet. Even get to attack for 6 here. And play Nessa's Pilgrimage. To gain another life. So... We're at 8, our opponent... Attacks for 5, Twin Bolts or Face, we're at 1, we can block the Perilous Mirror with the Offshoot, so we don't kill it. So yeah, we're actually still alive. But we still have to find an answer to the Vanguard, or find a way to kill our opponents very quickly. Twin bolts, well now our opponent probably sees it. 
Twin Bolt us and Peril Smear, and then we're dead. Well, if he missed it last turn, maybe he misses it again. Alright, our opponent finally figured it out and uh, we'll be able to take this game, although it was getting pretty close there near the end. So still glad that we put up a fight, but yeah, definitely a match that is still quite difficult for the ramp deck. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opening hand, which uh, features a lot of expensive cards and not a lot of cheap cards, and we are on the play, so I think we have to ship this one. Uh, this one is a lot better. Definitely keeping turn one Jadi Offshoot to help against aggressive starts, then turn two Visionary into Leap into Moss. Should be pretty good. Alright, Boros Guildgate could still be an aggressive deck but at least there's no one drop. Let's go ahead and play Visionary. And a pause the turn. All right, that's not bad. So now we just have to make sure that we keep hitting our land drops till turn four, so we can cast the Acid Moss. And it looks like no turn to play, all right. That's good news. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and attack for one. And play Evolutionary Leap. And hope that we draw land next turn. Unfortunately, sacrificing the Visionary here will not increase our odds of and drawing a land by that much. I guess it takes out a creature, so we are less likely to draw it. But I think it's still better to keep the Visionary in play. Alright, I guess I'll take it. So we can attack with the Visionary again. And play Pilgrimage. Our opponent can respond by killing the Visionary here now that we can't use the Evolutionary Leap, but probably still doesn't. Gain some more life, pause the turn, and next turn we get to cast Acid Moss on this Guild Gate. Or I guess we could also just play Outland Colossus as our opponent plays Foundry Street into. Infectious Bloodlust, alright. So it gives it haste and hits us for 3 damage. I don't think we want to block with our offshoot quite yet. Still doing good work. Another Acid Moss? Hmm. So our opponent clearly has some mana issues over there. So we could just play Acid Moss, then block the Denizen, sack the Visionary, set him back a little further and then drop the Colossus with her opponent unable to really answer it. Or we could run out the Colossus right now and hope for the best, although there are some cards that uh, our opponent could have to kill the Colossus, especially with white mana. So I think Given that we're not under a ton of pressure, I'm okay with playing it a little safer here and a little slower. Play Acid Moss and then pause the turn. No need to attack for one here. We can just block and sacrifice our Elvish Visionary. And go from there. Our opponent is forced to attack with the Denizen because of the uh, Infectious Bloodlust. 
So might have to run his own creature into our Colossus next turn. As we find a Gaius Revenge. And our opponent has had enough. Looks like one a land destruction card was enough to get the job done. Um, yeah, it's tempting to play another one, but I probably shouldn't. Uh, good, could go for Gaius Revenge, although I think Outland Colossus will kill a little faster. So let's go with the Colossus. And pass the turn. Could have also played Revenge and not attacked with it. Alright, that's fine. Definitely blocking here. Our opponent could have a Titan Strength. But that's fine. Alright, there it is. And we could, let's see. We could sack our Colossus to the Leap. But then they won't trade, so I think I would rather just trade here. And then on our turn, opponent gets another Bloodlust. On our turn we have to decide if we wanna play some more Acid Mosses, or if we wanna play the Gaius Revenge. Hmm, let's see. Playing Acid Moss doesn't sound bad, since then we could actually cast Desolation Twin. I'm guessing the correct play is Gaia's Revenge, but the sweeter play is definitely Double Acid Moss here. Get another land, gain some more life. And just go nuts. Alright, pause the turn, and then next turn it's twin time. Yep. This is how I envision all my games going. So let's see. 10 can't cast the offshoot this turn. Guess we'll settle with 20 power and 20 toughness. Pause the turn. And I think we're gonna get there. So the opponent has to discard to hand size. Interesting. Not a card you expect in aggro decks. Uh, but yeah, we'll just play out our revenge. And attack for lots and lots of damage. Alright, sweet. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day.